Hi, welcome to the video. My name is Zychronic, and today we're going to be talking about the Zerg's location, his random roles, and all the recommendations for what day is it? May, May 6, 2022. You can tell that I don't drink because I didn't know yesterday was Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Uh, anyways, you can find the Xur in the Winding Cove on the EDZ. Just head over on top of this big old mountain right here, and you can find him right here next to that precipice. I realize nobody makes a comment about the precipice joke in the comments, but like, I like the joke, and it makes me laugh, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. This is a high overview, and consider all you care about. Ooh, we got some good exotics here today. First stop for the exotic weapon today, we have the Skyburner's Oath. And I will say that this weapon is hot, absolute hot trash in a lot of different ways. Although it's somewhat fun sometimes, but they are going to be changing it. I forget exactly how they're going to change it, but they're going to be changing it next season. And from what I remember, it just didn't make me feel that I wanted to use it. But they will be changing it, so many people may want it. This is your opportunity to pick it up before that time. Essentially, this weapon large, uh, lobs explosives that actually seek towards a target. They're making it so it doesn't seek through the target anymore, which was the fun part. And when you aim down sights, the slugs are faster, travel faster, and save straighter, and it, it's whatever, man. It's big mag, extended mag makes the reload shit, and it's just not exotic. Come on, it's just boring. Following that, for the hunter exotic, we have the Celestial Nighthawk, which... <laughs> if you saw my short from yesterday, you may have some, uh... You may have some feelings about this, <laughs> but the Celestial Nighthawk probably, and this is true, one of the best hunter exotics in the game as it turns your uh, golden gun into in one shot and it does six times the damage. So way more DPS, way more total ammo damage from a very safe range, and if you get a kill with it, you get around a third of your super energy back, which is part of the exotic, which is a part people forget about, makes it a decent option for grandmasters because you kill a champion, you get a third of your super back, and then you can use your super more frequently on these champions. As far as the stats go, you want to see high energy intellect for this exotic high mobility for a hunter and then high recovery but there is not high recovery but there's a good total stats of 65 so if this fits in your build decent distribution decent total following that for the titan exotic the heart of inmost light probably one of the best titan exotics in the game something that um, seems really simple but just works with so many builds especially with void 3.0 and all of the special abilities and stuff and the changes to how many different grenades you can have this exotic is being used a lot more the only big problem I have with it is that it doesn't work with any armors. It's the Destiny 1 armor, and it, I don't know why. It just it doesn't fit, and I don't like it. But if you use an ability, either your grenade, melee, or barricade, it empowers the other abilities. Empowering means that you have faster regeneration, and it deals more damage. Barricades have more hit points. It is just so simple, but it just makes everything work so much better. I personally love using it with stasis on my Titan, using those glacier grenades, sliding through them, causing a big explosion, and with a bunch of other fragments, aspects, mods and whatever i get my grenade every like 30 seconds to slide into another dude and it's just so much fun and this this exotic chess piece is at the center of it and it is very good but again it doesn't fit <laughs> as far as the role goes you probably like to see strength discipline resilience and it actually has all of that except for discipline but it also has a high recovery and that is good. Obviously, discipline would be really nice and is the big part of this. Grenades are one of the best abilities. But a total stats of 65. If this works with your build, this is an okay roll. Following that for the Warlock Exotic. By the way, the Warlocks won. Can we talk about how the Warlocks won the first week of the Guardian Games? I mean no offense to Warlocks, but it seems highly unlikely by how much they lost by in the previous Guardian Games that they're just going to be winning. Did Bungie change the way things work just to make Warlocks get a turn at winning? This is the same thing I said last last time was that, oh, I guess it's Hunter's turn to win, so they made it so it's impossible for other people to win. And now the Warlocks are winning. And again, I mean, no offense, but it seems highly unlikely. Anyways, uh, the, uh, the Warlock exotic today is going to be the Felwinter's Helm. Powered melee fauna blows create a burst of energy that weakens nearby targets, and that is a burst at the target, so the ranged melees will happen at the target. And finishers and fauna blows against better or bigger targets will give you a bigger burst and a lengthened weaken effect. Keep in mind, weaken also includes disorient, so you get like a little smoke bomb on your screen, and if there are good warlock melees, this may see a little bit more use, but it's just a niche scenario, and oftentimes an enemy that gets hit from far away will just walk away as far as the roll goes probably like to see a lot of strength and it does have a lot of strength and for warlocks probably a lot of recovery but they don't like mobility uh so and the total stats of 61 is a little below average so not my favorite role moving on let's go ahead and take a look at the different legendary weapons first of all last perdition rangefinder kill clip 
Gosh, golly, if this had some more range bits in it. Rangefinder Kill Clip is basically exactly what you want in 3 and 4, and this one has a lot of range. If you can get Accurize Rounds, Range Mash to work, and a good zoom, this has like nearly maxed out range and is one of the highest range pulse rifles out there. And I would honestly still recommend this roll, even though, again, it doesn't have every range bit. This is a really good roll. Following that, we have the False Promises with Overflow Rampage. Overflow is not a big thing on these 360s as they fire slow enough anyways, but it does have Rampage. I would like to see a bit more range and handling stuff in this, so not my favorite role, but not bad. After that, we have the Eternal Blaze on, Slide Shot Unrelenting. I forget what this has, but if it can have Explosive Payload, I've... Explosive Payload. Uh, following that, Truth Teller, which is Field Prep Multi Kill Clip. I do know this has Auto Loading and something else like Vorpal, and it does not have... Spike grenades or blinding grenades, so it's not really a great roll. Uh, after that, we the first and last out with a slice shot demolitionist. Not a bad combination, although I would like to see uh, either a full choke here for the PV. Oh no, there's no full choke on slugs. What am I saying? Uh, I would like to see a salt mag for PVE, and of course, auto loading Vorpo, which it's probably a bit better. Following that, we have the Honor's Edge, Tireless on Guard. I don't like this combination, um, and it doesn't even have Jagged, uh, jagged Edge. Uh, and then lastly, we have Talons of the Eagle, which is a 150 scout rifle. I'm not a fan of 150s. It has Outlaw, uh, Ambitious. It's just not very well built. Following that, for the Warlock options here today, a 66. Gosh, golly. Mobility, Recovery, and Strength. It's a very interesting and very high stat <laughs> armor piece. Uh, high intellect, high mobility, high recovery, good, decent distribution, uh, just not a high total stats. High resilience, high intellect, not my favorite, and 58 with high recovery, high intellect. That's a decent but low kind of combo. Honestly, this this exotic right here is just so spiky and interesting. I just, I want it. And I would highly recommend it because it may fit in certain builds very, very well. Following that, let's go ahead and take a look at the different options for the exotic weapons. First of all, we have Hawkmoon with Killing Wind. Last week, we saw a range masterwork and it did control recoil direction or not a range masterwork a range finder and i thought that was a very very good roll this week we have a killing wind with a combat grip which controls the recoil direction bringing it to 100 which is nice and we have full bore which increases the range by decreasing the stability and handling not the best combination i still think extended barrel plus polymer is going to be my favorite or combat plus uh, hammer forge and range finder uh, so not the best combo but not terrible Following that, for the Dead Man's Tail, we have a moving target that also has uh, polygonal rifling. I always forget what the best roll is on DMT, um, but I was told last week was also really, really good. Uh, and it had Vorpal, and it had... Um, I forgot what it had, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> but I will, I will look into this. And it has, um, has, a, has a catalyst. I always forget about that. I, f I forget that this is not just built into it. It's the catalyst. Uh, and of course, make sure you claim your exotic Angram. Guarantees you... Oops. It guarantees you an exotic you've never received before, and it's a high stat roll. And if you have every exotic, it just gives you a high stat roll. So if you want an extra melee for whatever reason... Ooh, that's a high stat roll, actually. <laughs> yeah, it has high strength, too. Although I think the one that I have is even better, somehow. You know, I'm starting to think that these flickering shadows are not Bungie's fault, because they've been around for a long time. But then I think to myself, oh wait, yeah, Bungie does take a while to fix stuff sometimes. <laughs> Uh, it could be a driver thing, I don't know, but they keep flickering. And of course, if you haven't seen it already, I do live stream after all of these videos, and of course all the times on screen right now, so come check it out. Oftentimes doing open lobbies for raids, for the seasonal stuff, for the Guardian games, hashtag Team Titans, um, and also having absolutely no fun. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, a big thank you to Mom and Dad, Christian Thompson, Kayla, and Outstrike, Jacob Berg, Monday, to Democrats, Uno Panther, and Casey Reagan for their support on Patreon. That's it, hope you guys enjoy. My name is Arconic, and I'll see you guys on the next one. I like to talk a bit fast. It's very fun.